Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'll be walking you through how you can deploy a Flask app to Render. If you don't know what Render is, Render is a cloud platform that provides services for deploying web applications. It offers various features to help developers easily deploy, manage, and scale their applications. Now, before we get started, I assume you already have your Flask app created and ready to go. Additionally, you want to ensure that you have this app.run or whatever function is running your app to be in production mode. So ensure that you do not have um, debug is equal to true so that your application isn't deployed in development mode. Also, I have a virtual environment for my app, which is an isolated space where you can install Python packages separately from the system-wide Python installation. And this helps to avoid conflicts between package versions in different projects. Now, if you don't have a virtual environment, I do recommend that you create one. And you can create one by doing Python 3 hyphen M V E N V and then the name of your environment, given that you're in the same working directory as your application. Now, if you're on Windows, instead of doing Python 3 hyphen M V E N V and then the name of your environment, you can just do Python hyphen M V E N V and then the name of your environment. And then once you've created your virtual environment, you'll need to activate it. So for Mac users, you can activate it by doing source then the name and then forward slash bin forward slash activate. If you're on Windows, you're going to do the name of the environment backslash scripts with a capital S and then activate. And this will ensure that you have not only created your environment, but also activated it. Once you've activated it, you're going to want to install all the packages that your app requires. So for me, my app requires Flask. So I'll install Flask by doing pip3 install Flask which I already have installed. And additionally, we're also gonna need a package called Gunicorn, which will be needed to run the app on render. So after you've installed all of your app's dependencies, you're gonna to wanna to do pip3 install Gunicorn. And if you're, again, if you're on Windows, you're gonna do pip install Gunicorn. And Gunicorn is basically gonna be the package that we're gonna to use to run the app on render. And after installing all of our packages, you're going to need to generate a requirements.txt file, which will be used to store our current environment's packages. So when deploying, Render is gonna use this requirements.txt file to install the exact packages your app requires, ensuring that it runs smoothly. So to create this file, you're gonna do pip3. Again, if you're on Windows, you're gonna do pip, and then freeze greater than symbol requirements.txt. And after I hit enter here on the left, you can see that it has been created and includes all of the packages that our app needs to run. So for you, you may have more packages, but since I just have one route within my Flask app returning an H1 tag, I don't need many dependencies. I just have the dependencies that Flask requires along with Flask itself and Gunicorn installed. Again, if you have more dependencies for your app, you're gonna see more. So now that we have this completed, we can get on and create our Git repository, which we're going to be using to deploy our app. So here on the left, I have my GitHub page and I'm creating a new repository. So I'll type in my repository name, which will be render flask deployment. And I've set this to public. And after this, we'll just click this green button to create our repository. Now here we can follow these commands to push our app files to the repository. However, I wanna make sure that this venv folder is not uploaded. And this is because the venv folder contains all the packages that we've installed and it can be quite large, which would take up unnecessary space on both GitHub and Render. And that's why we have this requirements.txt file to list all of our dependencies, which Render will use to recreate the virtual environment when we deploy our app. So to ensure that this virtual environment directory is ignored, I'll create a .gitignore file in our app folder. I'll type in venv to make sure that this directory is ignored. So once I've saved my changes, I'm gonna first type in git init to initialize a git repository within this folder. And here you can see that we've created the empty git repository. And I'll do git add, and I'll just type dot so that it takes in everything. And then we'll do git commit hyphen m first commit. 
and I'll just clear my terminal to make it easier for you guys to see. Then we'll do git branch hyphen capital M main to ensure that we're on the main branch. And then I'll just paste this origin here and we'll do git push hyphen u origin main. And after hitting enter and refreshing our GitHub page here, you can see that we have uploaded our app file right here along with our requirements.txt file containing all of our directories and the git ignore, which has ignored the virtual environment directory, which was not pushed to GitHub. So now we can head on over to render to deploy our application. So now that we have uploaded all of our files that we need to GitHub, you can head on over to render's website, which you can find at render.com. And here you're going to click get started at the top right corner of the screen to create an account. Now, I already have an account, so I'll just sign in with Google. But once you've created your account and signed in, you'll be greeted with a page that looks similar to this. Now here, we're gonna be deploying a web app. And since this is a web service that has a backend, um, we're gonna be clicking new web service right here. So after clicking this, it'll give you a few options. So it'll give you the option to provide the source code from a Git provider, a public Git repository, or an existing Docker image. But earlier when we created our repository, I configured my repository to be a public repository. And since it is public, I can just copy this URL for the repository. And in my render page right here, I can paste the link to the public Git repository. Now, if you do have a private repository, you can sign in with your Git provider and link that repository to the source code here. But since mine is public, I'll just paste in the URL and then I'll click connect so that it'll connect the repository. And here we can configure the name for our web service. So I'll just call this render flask app video as the name and then the language is of course in Python and the branch that we deployed our source code to was main. And in this region, you can configure this to your liking, but I'll just stick with the default Oregon uh, region right here. And then the root directory is optional, but since we uploaded to GitHub with all of our app files here, it'll automatically assume that this is the root uh, directory. So you don't have to configure anything here. And this build command, you're gonna leave it as is. Now we did configure a requirements.txt file, which matches the name right here. And what this command will do is whenever the app is being deployed, it'll run pip install hyphen r requirements.txt to install all the packages that are listed. And when I mentioned that we needed Gunicorn installed, this is the use case for that right here. So after it installs Gunicorn via this command, it'll use Gunicorn to run our application. Now I want you to be um, cognizant of what you write here. So if you look back at our file name, the file name that contains this app.run function is called app.py. Now, if you have a different file name, let's say your file name was main.py, you would have to put gunicorn main colon app. Okay. But since the name for my file that contains this app.run function is app.py, which you can see in this GitHub page right here, I will put app colon app, okay? And this will just make it so that Gunicorn knows which file to run so that the app can be deployed. So after you have this start command configured, you're going to click free for the instance type. And then if you have any environment variables within your application, you can configure them here. And if you need to have any sort of secret files or pre-deploy commands that you need, you can configure them here as well. But since our application is pretty simple, we don't need to toy around with this at all. So then I'll go ahead and click deploy web service. And I'll also revert my file name back to app here. So if you give it a few minutes to deploy, it will show a build succeeded message and I'll come back once that is done. So after a few minutes of clicking deploy, your web application will be online. So here you can notice that it has said that our service is live. And additionally, if you look up right here, you can see that 
it ran the gunicorn command after installing the dependencies from our requirements.txt file, which you can see right here. And if you go to this purple link here, and I'll open it in a new tab, you can see that your web app is live. And if you go back to these logs here and scroll all the way down, you'll see that a request was made to the web app right here. And this is all that you have to do to deploy your web application. So I hope this process was easy to follow along. And if you enjoyed and were able to learn something and deploy your Flask app and were able to view it on the web like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section and I'll do my best to respond to you. And with that being said, have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.